Greetings everyone. This is your favorite food alchemist on Sunday. I would like to talk to you about the artichokes. I found them in my local market. Sorry, I think they sting. And I wanted to show you how to prepare them and some different things that you can do with them. Well, just basically how to just basically actually um, going to turn the music down a little bit. I wanted to show you how to uh, clean them, break them down and boil them. And then I can tell you some other things you can do with them after that, if you don't mind. So if you will be staying tuned with us, I thought we would listen to music as I talk um, and see how you feel. So it's for me, it's very good. I love music. So you're not just feel like you're hearing my voice and, and nothing, just, you know. Okay. So, um, or I can look for some other music. Um, Um, I know, you're like, what? Well, I guess it's meant for us to listen to this. Okay, so you see our artichoke, and it has these, and this is how you tell good artichoke they're like, usually like this, and they're hard, and they're like close spine, but when you get them loose, you want to peel off like at the bottom. You know, peel up the bottom and take this down. Just beautiful artichoke. So, until you see, you know, the leaves are not brown, like bitter, or breaking off everything. And because you want to eat them, you know, there's leaves that you can actually eat. People are like, no, you can't eat them. Yes, you can. These little thorns, when you start cooking them, actually start to get really, really nice and make it where you can actually um, can actually cook them. And and some people just keep going, and all depends on where where you feel comfortable at. You know, like I'll keep going and you can make artichoke dip, artichoke spinach dip with them, which are really beautiful, which I like. So I am going to take off the points. This is what I do. <laughs> so. I'm going to loosen all of that up and clean. You see how good that is? Like, look at that. And then how, you want to get these cleaned. You don't want them being like around there and like all of this, this dirt and stuff is in your, you know, your artichoke. That's just me. So... I'm going to put them in this bowl, so you're going to just, you know, watch, just watch as we go through this, peel, and I'm going to take this off, of course, and also going to cut that. See how that goes. How are you feeling? Like, wow. Seeing all that, just taking it off and seeing, like, until you feel the leaves are not hard anymore. And like I said, you can make artichoke dip. 
with this. Uh, and I love playing that out. Okay, and I mean, I really get in there because I want it when I clean, I want them all to be cleaned. So. table's not the best, <laughs> but like I said, it gets the job done, right? <laughs> there we go. Say so why are you messing around when you don't have to be messing around, right? Because the artichoke, it grows in dirt. And sometimes the dirt and the sand and all that gets in between these leaves. So you want to make sure you thoroughly clean them and actually soak them. So once we get these down, I want you to see, you know, bruising. And get the thorns off. Because these thorns right here, they can actually hurt. They actually, like, like stickers. Like a cactus. They actually can hurt you. So, you know, I want you to be careful. You handle this, this artichoke, and the inside. You know, inside artichoke hearts. I was a little girl. I used to love eating the artichokes. Beautiful, soaked in olive oil and garlic. Oh, it was just parsley, I believe, and probably oregano, and a little bit of lemon juice. I mean, it was so delicious. So as you can see, I'm opening it so that when I get in there, I will be able to eat this. And then some people, when they go through all this, some people actually cut it in half too. And we can do that too. Uh, cut it in half and I can show you what it looks like. So in half because they're beautiful like I said they are just so delicious I love them so you know I almost didn't open this one almost so so far I only did three thing with the unfortunately with my video camera if I actually stop my uh, like pause it to even to show you like so let someone go in the kitchen and clean it off it would uh, basically what ouch would uh, <laughs> be away Look at that, like a lot of them. You'd be surprised at what you get when you start cutting away at this. And these thorns, they hurt. Well, I mean, like I said, they remind me of cactus. In Italy, they eat artichokes a lot of the times. It's part of the Mediterranean diet big time. And we in America are just starting to see artichokes. Like, um, I went into, what was it, Applebee's, some restaurant, I'm quite sure. Another, I'm not sure, but another restaurant went in. And you won't believe they had artichoke dip with spinach. But I like mine. Basically, this is a good artichoke. And you can find these stuff in, in sale in, uh, you believe, like in your little markets, like maybe little Asian markets was in sale at a market called Mekong, M-E-K-O-N. 
on South Dobson in, uh, in Mesa. It was on a very, very nice store. It has a lot of the Asian and Vietnamese and Indonesian food. It has fresh fish market. It's almost like there was another store out here like Lily's. And that was the market I was turned to when I lived in the West Valley at one time and went there and they had all the stuff that I like just fresh oil and they had um what else rose water that I used to make baklava and baklava that I used like um I thought it was Armenian but as a uh, the dish that I like was actually from Persia uh, believe it or not made with rose water and that was the dish that I was first to taught to make but in my book that I learned it from the joys of cooking back in the day it said that it was actually Armenian and they said the Greeks actually use lemons and um, orange flavors citrus flavors that's what I was told um, at the time so what I'm gonna do is ask my assistant um, at this time to go and actually clean so I'm gonna talk to you for a little bit so I'm gonna shift the camera uh, you know from myself and ask her to wash this off then I'm gonna cut these up and then I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in the pan and I'm gonna show you exactly uh, what can be done so that you know I try to cut her out as much as I can so she's you can probably see the camera in here and all the stuff that's doing but uh, I'm gonna cut it in half and I'm gonna put it in some lemon water which I happen to love lemons I happen to love lime I happen to love citrus but as I was saying um, about a Parisian uh, about the market called Lily's had a rose of uh, rose water which I was looking for that I couldn't find when I first came here years ago. And then I had this phyllo dough and I was looking for that. And it was like, they had everything that was Indonesian, that was Asian, that was Greek, that was African. You walked it up and down the aisles. It was like this international market. Lily's was just not an Asian market. And then they had the fresh market where everything is fresh they had fresh fish that was flown in some of it was frozen some of it was you know like i said fresh then they had the chickens and you get to see where they come from and then you're gonna ask questions if you know what to do or you know just your way of doing stuff i had no problem um they had goat there which i had never seen in a store before besides going to a caribbean store um they had tilapia there they had red snapper there um, at Mingong, they have oxtails, they had duck, they had gander, they had salmon, they have chicken, they have fish, they had artichokes, um, they have all these wonderful selections of fruits from international, like dragon fruit. My favorite favorite is Thai basil. I love Thai basil. I can just sit there and watch Thai basil and just eat it. It just feels so refreshing to me. And also, they have a good selection of herbs like. They have chives, which um, I go there and I get, and I hadn't seen, like, chives in a long time. You know, back in the day when I was a kid, they had chive <coughs> chives. You would put them on a potato, and that's all you get, like, sour cream and chives. Um, that's all I knew it was. But then I found that there's other dishes that you can use chive for. So I learned that then they have the long green beans. Like, we have little thin string beans, but these are long. They're, like, this long green beans, and you can make... And what I did for those green beans, which was something simple, I took the green beans, I, you know, took off the ends, and basically I blanched them. And then after I blanched them, what I wind up doing to the um, green beans is actually um, shocking them, put them in the freezer for later on to flash freeze and then after flash freeze them I put a little thing of sesame seed oil together a little bit of garlic a little bit of ginger a little bit of soy and then I sauteed in that and then I had some sesame seeds so to me that was like the ultimate okay now that now that she's uh, 
back. I'm going to show you, you know, my thing that I'm going to cut in half. See how beautiful that is? And it's washed. And you'll see the little heart inside here. See that little beautiful? That's a heart. All of this, this is so beautiful. So we're going to put this in a pan. I'm going to cut these. Okay, and and we're going to put them in. I mean, these are beautifully. She did a beautiful job cleaning them. Thank you, my dear. They look so beautiful. Um, They're just really, and I mean, they're nice and soft and pliable. Like, I like to work with them. So, it just makes, like I said, this is just going to be beautiful. So, um, you guys can see a little bit. I'm actually using my frying pan. But if you have a steamer, you can do them or... A bigger pot you can do it at the time like I told you guys if you don't have something make shift and make it work for you so you you know see what stuff don't just say oh I can't do this because I don't have this okay if you were on a desert island what would you do how would you make stuff work for you that's how I look at it you know there was always a makeshift something and whatever's negative try to turn it around and make it positive because you can and it can be a beautiful experience you would have never known unless you try so always try do not give up on something because it doesn't seem right mm -hmm. and you'll know if it's right or not right for you so this is what I do um, and you put them in the mm -hmm. okay this is how I have them in my frying pan so what I'm going to do is take some lemon juice that I had uh, my other assistant do is actually squeeze fresh lemon juice. Fresh. See? This is beautiful. Don't want to get too close to my computer. Don't want to fry it. So I'm going to put just a little bit over. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, as you can see, I'm going to fill it up to here with water and then I'm going to pour it in. And it's going to be covered. Okay? So, and like I said, if you want, you can saute it, stuff it, have it soaked in olive oil. Uh, olive oil at that time of anything that you want to do. So I think that's very just beautiful that you have it soaked. Um, so what I'm going to do is have my assistant, again, Put in water and start to boil it and just have a cover over it and what i'm going to do is also add a little salt as you can see this is himalayan salt um i'm going to put himalayan salt over it okay just a little bit and then i'm put some cayenne pepper my favorite Doo -doo -doo -doo. love cayenne pepper and i tell you i told you why y'all should not eat black pepper it's not good for your digestive system and it does its damage and cayenne pepper actually heals the body so um, without that saying this has been your favorite food alchemist I want to say love light lot love light life longevity and much prosperity to all of us and it's been a blessing to serve you if you have any questions you can always go to www c h e f s e s s y f o o d a l c h e m i s t dot com that is chef sessy food alchemist that e, um, website again is w w c h e f s e s s y f o o d a l c h e m i s t dot com and that's it, Chef Sessie Food Alchemist.com. I hope to hear from you and I hope you have questions. Or what you can do is post a response down there on my YouTube screen. And I want you to have a happy Sunday. <laughs>